Hey there, and welcome to the latest episode of the Mind Body Health podcast with myself, Dave Sheehan, high performance consultant and dedicated now for over 25 years to educating, motivating, and I do hope inspiring you to become the best you that you can be and, and live in the best life experience you can have. Because as I always say, you can be and have whatever you want. You just have to put the work in, get in the right mindset, have control, as I always stress, of foundation of mind, body and health. And this is a big part of this podcast and getting you to achieve your goals and dreams because it's there for you. And I'm delighted on this particular episode of a very special guest live from Albuquerque. It's Dr. Joe Casper, who's a health coach. He's a clinical nutritionist. He's an author. He's the owner of a supplement company. He's an all around good guy. He's a little bit shy. Um, <laughs> so I, I'll try to tease that out of him. But uh, he's a good friend, known for many years. And uh, he's, a, he's an incredible coach. He, he's passionate about helping people to have better health, have better lives. And, uh, you know, like myself, he pulls no punches and tells things straight. So it's going to be very educational, very informative. I'm sure it'll even be amusing at times. Dr. Joe Casper, welcome to the Mind Body Health Podcast. Hey, you guys. By the way, one second, because I have the, the dogs here eating the plants. Hey, one second, because life happens. <laughs> okay. Junior, get away, from, get away from the plant. Right. I told I told I told you it'd be amusing. No, we kick off with amusing straight away. <laughs> things, things happen, yeah, because the dogs uh, come first. Exactly. Anyway. So Dave, welcome, thank, to, thank you for, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I want the folks to know I met actually Dave Sheehan on the Marketers Cruise, I believe in 2013 with your son. Somewhere, yeah. somewhere around that, yeah. 2013, yeah. what did I mean? And I didn't even know you. And I remember we, we had a nice conversation. And here was the best part about you as a person. That's why I thought you were a really great guy. So much so we were competition for each other because, you know, you do fitness, I do fitness and, and nutrition, all that stuff. And Dave welcomed me with open arms and vice versa. I was, had fun meeting his son. I even taught your son how to play paper football, which we did in middle school back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> and he spoke on stage and spoke about me, which he didn't have to do. It was like, whoa, this guy, you added me to your presentation in the last minute. I'm like, this guy did this for me? Who does that? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, what an incredible man. And, I, and then it happened. I said, you know what? I'll be this guy's lifetime friend because it's about actions. People talk crap or whatever. But you show me from your heart what you're doing. Hey, Ray, Ray, what do you got in your and, mouth? And that's Sorry. what matters. That's what matters, though, you know, working from the heart and being authentic. And if someone is good, you have to spread the credit and have to spread their name. And that's basically what it would have been. If I see someone as they can add value to people and they're genuine and authentic, then they need to get any exposure I can give them. And that's the way we need to be. Like, it, we, we are in an industry where people nearly want to protect their own turf they don't like recommend other people they feel threatened right right that just shows themselves they don't believe in themselves enough to be honest that's the way i look at it like i have self-belief i know i'm good at what i do that means i'm not threatened by anyone else and if someone else is good of course i'm going to promote them because everyone right. connects with different kinds of people as well and that applies to all industries but especially the health industry because you're dealing with people right. on a personal level different types of personalities different types of backgrounds different types of needs Everyone connects with different types of people. You'll have people who connect with you who wouldn't connect with me and vice versa, or some would be both. Yes. So this is the way it is. And we just have to, again, do all we can to help other people, whether that means, means them work with us or recommending someone else to go with them. So it's the way it should be, but it rarely happens. Well, what, what happens too is everything comes with money. So in other words, when you go on, on, on business things, which you and I have done in marketing, guys, easy. I'm sorry, that's the dogs. <laughs> that sometimes people do what's called affiliate marketing and they'll only recommend someone because, you know, they're going to get paid on it. And I yeah. get that. And, and if you do, that's fine. But when someone says so-and-so's got the best vitamins, I'm like, no, they don't. You're doing that because you're making money, but that's your business. Yeah, exactly. Like, like someone said to me, you know, Joe, can, could you promote my vitamins on your website or your shows? I said, absolutely not. Mm, yeah. I said, there's two reasons. One, yours aren't as pure as mine. That's impossible. And it is impossible, which I'll explain later. And two is no, because it, that's not what I do. Yeah. And speaking and, again, I, that's, that's where authenticity and being having integrity matters. You know, people need to work out of integrity. Like, do you, if you recommend eight and you should truly believe in what you're saying, but most people, as you said, are promoting stuff purely just for money. That's it. Well, right. But, but they, they don't have an understanding of it. It's like, example, aren't you going to ask me what's in my cup, Dave? I hope it's water. Do you think it's coffee or you don't think I need any coffee? There's, there's no Red Bull in there, is there? No, I don't. I don't need any coffee. I, it's actually it's hot water, lemon, turmeric, and ginger. If you can see, very, kind of, very good. Yeah. yeah. This guys, this this guy does not need coffee, and you would want not want to give him coffee. I'd hate to see no, him I, drink coffee. I, I don't need it. I, don't, I you know I don't need. And listen, you can find studies in health 
and I can I can show you this. They show cigarettes, coffee, alcohol all help you. At some point, they're going to be detrimental. And some people say, well, wine's healthy, coffee's healthy. And I go by this logic. If you're pregnant, ladies out there, are you drinking coffee or, or alcohol? Well, no. Well, why would you do it on a regular basis? Yeah. Yeah. But the fitness industry is huge on coffee and and red red bull and all this other stuff. Yeah. Most fitness people do it. Most yeah. doctors do it. But I'm not telling you not to have coffee. It's not my business. But here's the reality. That's acidic. Yeah, totally. Okay. Just, it's not the best thing for you. Yeah. The thing for people to realize is that these things are not good for you. Know that. If you choose okay. to still consume coffee or alcohol or Red Bull or whatever, if you at least know what it's doing, you're making your own decision. So that's your own level of prioritizing but, but, of your health. So it's up to people problem, to they, do that. <clears throat> they don't know what they're doing. So in other words, when, when someone reads a can of Red Bull, okay, unless they have a chemistry background or like I'm a formulator, I know what every chemical is I'm like, oh, this sounds okay. It's not okay. No. So, so example, when you buy a product and a lot of products have this vitamins and food, citric acid, citric acid is in a chemical form. Okay. It's not good for you, but it sounds okay. Doesn't it? Of course it is. Yeah. It sounds much better than titanium dioxide or magnesium steroids or blue dye number one. Right. Yeah. Like citric is the thing people will focus on, you know? So they right, think, right, right, that's, that's, that's similar to no. food. Exactly. But this right. is where people need to learn how to read food labels and not be just sold by the marketing that happens. You know, at the end of the day, if a product has 20 ingredients, you can't pronounce most of them. That's not a good sign. If they're not natural ingredients, it's not a good sign. So it's simple, like make sure products have as few ingredients as possible and make sure they're as natural as possible. You actually know what they are. It's like in with sugar, you'll have sugar. If it says sugar, it's not great, but it's better than having stuff like maltodextrin and all the other derivatives of sugar that are far worse. Oh, correct. Thank you for saying, and it's funny because people read a label and it says no sugar and it's a bunch of chemicals. They go, oh, it's okay, I'm a diabetic. No, it's not. No, it's, it's not. not. Yeah. And, and every time I see a person post sugar causes cancer, sugar does this. You're not, they're not wrong. Yeah, but the they're chemicals not right. Are worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The chemicals it. are worse. It's like, it's like I always give this example. If you take the Diet Coke and Zero Coke industry is massive. And all it was is Coke being smart, knowing as sugar is being vilified, here, let's do a Diet Coke. Then it was vilified even more where you should have no sugar whatsoever. Let's create a zero. But normal Coke is far better than diet. It's far better than zero because you're basically right. getting shittier and shittier products that are more and more toxic to your body because it's just chemicals. So you've got 12 spoons of sugar in a can of Coke with some crappy chemicals. You've got three or four spoons of sugar in a diet one with more chemicals than the original version. And you've got zero Coke, which is literally just chemicals and toxic shite that's right. going to be detrimental right. to your health. But the marketing, people fall for the marketing. And people need to realize that the food industry is purely about profit. Humans are vehicles for profit. And that is it. And people need to learn how to read labels, understand what these products actually mean. And just simply, if it's whole food, the less, the less man does to something, the better it is, basically. Like, that's a right. simple route to go by. Just learning these things. But, but here's the issue, Dave. You're a thousand percent correct. But most people want to fit in. They totally. Do. I mean, yeah. Cool. So, so, and I've said this for years and I'm going to say, you know, until I'm dead one day is that people want to fit in with their friends and family, you know, like me personally, I'm a health guy. I'm a black sheep, my family. I wish it wasn't true, but it is. Okay. Yeah, so my family doesn't, they don't want my health advice, whatever that that's fine. That's, that, that's their, that's their loss. Exactly. But you have to be who you are. So example, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 55 year old single divorced guy. That's who I am. I'm also a party guy who doesn't party, which is an oxymoron, totally. Because I like to go out. I mean, I like, I like, like when I do speaking events, I like thousands of people. I love it. I, I love it. I'm in the life of a party without the, without the alcohol and the drugs and all that stuff. I don't need it. Yeah, yeah. So when I, when I go out with my friends, except for Super Bowl Sunday, I'll be going out with my friends to watch the game somewhere, okay? And because I have friends here, it's great. But no one's going to say, Joe, why are you eating a salad? I'm not, because I'm going to do what I want to do and they're my friends, and if they don't like it, they can lump it. So exactly. that's the reality of it. People are so afraid. So you go to someone's house for Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Thanksgiving, whatever holiday you celebrate, and you go, I'm not eating that. You know what most families are going to say? What's wrong with you? Yeah, exactly. Not like, not, wow, Lisa, that's so great. I'm really happy for you. No, what's wrong yeah. with you? What's wrong with you? Exactly. Yeah, that's the question. But the, but the and, thing is, this is something that people need to develop because when you truly don't give a shit about what anyone thinks of you, 
or what you do or your opinions or whatever, it's like a superpower. But most people, like you said, are followers. They want to be in the crowd. They want to do what everyone else is doing. They're having the balls to stand up and do what they want to do. It's no different than, like you said, the drinking thing. Like, there's plenty of people who probably would prefer not to drink, but they drink because they don't want to stand out and have people ask them, here, why are you not well, drinking? Exactly. Why are you not having that? They want, to obviously, a bit of false confidence for doing a bit of dancing or chatting someone up too, which is, look, that's natural. But it's more about that they don't want to stand out. People don't want to stand out with so many different things. This is why, you know, it's like the root of the Mind, Body, Health podcast and my philosophies. It's about when you get control of the mind, body and health, again, it's like a superpower. Everything else improves. You have more self-love. You have more self-care. You care about, you love yourself more. So you have more self-respect. You have more self-confidence. So you truly do start to do what you want to do in life. You know, it's like you're saying there with everything. You do what you want to do in life. If someone's got a problem with it, that's their problem. Nothing to do with you. You need to live your right, life right. authentic for you, to your values and everything. Thank you, Dave. And it's interesting because, I'll example, the sport, I'm big in the sports world. Okay, I played a high level baseball and other stuff. And I still can play competitive, even though I just got, you know, rehabbing from a major hamstring surgery. Guys I play ball with, baseball, stickball, whatever I'm playing, almost all of them, drink coffee on a regular basis, drink alcohol on a regular basis. I'm not saying they're drunks or whatever. You know, they drink, they eat crappy food, all that other stuff. I am definitely the only one on my teams over the years who is as healthy as me. There's no question. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. And when I was in my 20s doing this, I found out like I was hated. Like my teammates rooted for me to fail mm. because I train harder than them. I, I get to the field. <clears throat> I mean, I thought it was normal. When you have a nine o'clock in the morning baseball game, Dave, right? I think it's perfectly normal to get there 6.45 in the morning. I think it's perfectly normal. And when they get there at, you know, 8.15, 45 minutes before the game, 8.30, you know, they're like, they have a cigarette in their hand or a cup of coffee, or whatever. Here I am like running sprints like in a hundred degree heat and, and, and performing well. They wanted me not to have good games because then, oh yeah, see, he's not one of us. Yeah, yeah. You're and making them feel I got bad. Along, right, right. I got along with people, but here's the reality. Was, were they my best friends in the world? No, as we got older and they got married, was I invited to go weddings? No, I wasn't. I was friendly. I got along with them. Were they my friends? No. Now, years later, we could talk about it. Now, almost every single one, actually, every single one of them now is kids. They're not playing anymore. They put on more weight. I'm the only guy who's still playing. I'm the yeah. last man standing. I like okay. you said, you're 55, you know? So, again, that's testament to the way you live your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. But, right. Two, two years ago, I was I was playing with 20-year-olds. They could be my kids, you know? Yeah, So, yeah. so reality-wise is, but that's still not the end-all, 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 be-all. I had to do what I felt was right. And that's, that's the whole thing. And now as I've gotten older, what happens? I have more respect for me. I got the, I got my doctor title, some buy my vitamins. But when you're in your 20s, like you're a health nut. Now you're 55. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But they like, people like putting people in boxes. That's the issue, you know? Like to label people, put them in boxes. And if anyone's different to norm, like you said, you're a black sheep of the family. I'd be the exact same. You know, it'd be very different. And family, the people who should be listening to you are the ones who don't listen to you most of the time. But the thing is, I've always been authentic to myself. And even from a very young age, I was like that, which I'm very thankful for. But that, again, comes down to that I've worked on myself intensively in terms of my mindset, exercise, nutrition, sleep, lifestyle management, my goals, dreams, all these things since I was 17. So it's 26 years now. And that's an ev ever-evolving process. Yes, yes. Ever-evolving. And till the day I die, I'll be constantly looking, how can I be better? How can I feel better? How can I be more youthful? How can I affect anti-aging? How can I perform at my highest level? And so on and so on. Because age isn't the barrier, like society tells us. It's the way you're treating your body that's the barrier. That's why you have 90-year-olds running marathons in decent times. And you have someone who's 20 who can barely go up the stairs without nearly having a heart attack. So it's down to how you treat your body in so many right. ways. And your mind as well, of course. It's a, it's a choice. It's funny, like, I, I go, you know, like, I got my friends, like, I've gone out dancing with my friends, and I see people, and I'm, like, looking around, I'm, like, wow, these people, like, like a bunch of them on medication, and this and that, and, and in the next 10 years, some of them are going to die from cancer, all this stuff, and I'm, like, do they yeah. realize what they're doing to their body? But yeah. I can't go up to them and lecture them. I mean, I'm here if they need me, but I, I just, it's, it's sad, and it hurts me. I'm, like, these people could live a better life. Totally, but this is where, like, and I know you're very passionate about this, and, you know, you straight talker that, People need to take personal responsibility. It's like those people who are getting diseases, who have got a, a different ailments, who have whatever age they are right now, have different issues. That's been something that's happened over time. It didn't happen overnight. Like some drops right. out of a heart attack. They didn't get a heart attack from what they were doing in that moment. They got a heart attack from the previous 10, 20, 30 years of yes. abusing their body. 
So people need to start <clears throat> taking personal responsibility for all aspects of their health and well-being. Because at the end of the day, everything's a choice. Like you drinking, that's a choice. Just like someone listening or watching this might be down in two or three cans of Red Bull during the show. You know, we all make choices every day, thousands of decisions. So there's no excuse for not being where you should be because you're the one who's making the decision on where you get to. And people need to start facing up to the fact that every decision they make is like a little domino effect. And it, it leads to another thing, another thing, another thing. And we need to take personal responsibility for all aspects of our life, not just our health, because our decisions, our actions, our thinking even, because we attract what we think as well, that's bringing us to where we are now, where we've been, and where we're going to go to. Exactly. Like Dave, you did a great thing. I'm thinking about this as you're talking. You, you were living in England and you, you help people with their health, living with them and getting their healthy, which is a great. I've done it. Too. I've, lived, I've lived with people. You know, I was in North Georgia taking care of a family for a month. I've done all that stuff over the years. But you realize I need to come back to Ireland because I have a son to raise and I'm not losing my son. Mm. And that's it that reminds me of a guy. Do you remember a guy from the cruise years ago? Mitch Axelrod. Name ring a bell. Yeah. You yeah. know, Mitch. Yeah, yeah, great guy. Actually, he had a stroke a couple of years ago. He's doing much better. Well, Mitch was big on the speaking circuit back in the in the eighties with Les Brown and these other guys. Like, and he had to raise. <clears throat> I think he was getting divorced, whatever. So, and and he, he told people, "Listen, I, I can't speak anymore. I got to take care of my son." You know what they said to him? They go, "Mitch, if you stop speaking, they're going to forget about you." He goes, "I don't really care. I don't want my son not to forget about me." Yeah, prioritize. What's really right, right. important. Yeah, yeah. Dave, right, that's critical. Like, I don't have any kids, but if I had a kid, and, and let's say, example, I had a kid, and my only choice was, because I have a teaching license, to be a phys ed health teacher. Okay, I'm, I mean, I like doing this better as a nutrition doctor and speaker and stuff, and author and formulator. But if I had to take a job <clears throat> to be a phys ed teacher so I could be home with my kid, I'd do it. I, I mean, yeah. because my kid would come. So I would make that. It's not a sacrifice. It'd be an honor. The point is, I would do that. Yeah. And, and a lot of people like, you know, they say, oh, oh, my kids have more, 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 more. I have guys I grew up with. You know, we grew up, you know, lower middle class. They're doing way better financially than their parents, way better. And they, some of them said to me, Joe, we spoil our kids too much. I go, why'd you do that? Because because we didn't have anything. So they get cars, they get free education. But, yeah. what you know, what's your connection with your kids? Yeah. And that's all that matters to the kid, though, at the end of the day. Like at the end of the day, you can give a kid everything material in the world but if you don't give them time and love and experiences and memories all they remember you for is giving them stuff like that's I, I, I agree I'll, I'll give an example of something okay so um I, I grew up Jewish you know right Dave you know what I'm right okay right okay mm. so when you're Jewish you have what's called a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah it's like a communion confirmation got it yeah 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 most people have a party like like a big party with relatives and friends it costs a ton of money whatever and they do it so when I was in college, my friend Lumpy, do you remember the TV show Seinfeld? Yeah, yeah. My friend looks like George Costanza, Lumpy. He, looked, he actually, and he's a great guy. We met in college. I, I woke him up in a college class. He cursed me out. We've been friends ever since. Great. <laughs> okay. But I remember when we were 18 years old, we were talking, and he goes, Joe, if I ever get married, have kids, my kids are going to go to Israel instead of having a bar mitzvah. I'm like, yeah, if you ever get a woman. But besides that, I did. <laughs> but, but the yeah. point was, he said that. Yeah. And when his kids became 12 and 13, that's exactly what he did. They have that memory forever. In other words, yeah, my, my parents took us to Israel. And again, that's not forever, and I get it, but they yeah. get to see something. That, so to me, a trip like that is better than a party, right? Totally. Or better than right, getting right. some car or PlayStation or TV or whatever. Right. Because it's so, easy to get those things. And, and, and I told him, I go, I'm so proud of what you did. I, I, I go, you said that at 18, because I, I have a memory like an elephant. I, I remember everything, which I wish I didn't, but I do. <laughs> and I said, in 1985, you, you, in eight, no, 84, you said that. Yeah. And then in 2016, you did it. Yeah. I go, yeah. you did it. Yeah. And, and, and that's, do you realize, I mean, that's incredible. But that's where act, that. action's all that matters. But definitely in terms of and, when it comes to kids, it's memories is what matters more than anything. Oh, yes, yes. Listen, you, I, mean, I remember I had the mom, Dr. Joe show before my mom died. My mother would curse on the air, do whatever. I, I miss it. I mean, it was great together. Of course. But I miss my dad too. But like my friend Lumpy, he's a great father. When I see his kids love me, they like they, they, they love they love Joe. They're like, we love yeah, Dr. Yeah. Joe. And, yeah. and, and, and it's fun. But I tell his kids, and one of his sons' names is Little Lumpy. Isn't that funny? Little Lumpy. <laughs> yeah. I, I said, we goof around a lot, but I say, you guys realize you have an incredible father. And I get we yeah. I said they go on trips together, they like they take some for biking trips. Him and his wife spend time with those kids. Yeah. So one's gonna one sixteen. He drives already. 
So in the next couple of years, when they go off to college, or whatever they're going to do, they're going to say, wow, we had really great parents. And yeah. then they'll be great parents. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because again, it, like role models, that's the thing, like every parent has a responsibility to be a good role model. And there's no parenting manual. Like you have to kind of go as you go along, but you have to tune into your gut. Like with everything in life, you kind of know, everyone inherently knows what's right and what's wrong in every kind right. of aspect of life, every situation in life. So you kind of know what you should do. And that's where when people are choosing, you know, power, money, wealth, prestige, fame, all this kind of stuff over their kids, which does happen a lot, or over partners even and so on. You know, they know in themselves that that's not right, unless that happens to be their highest value, which in reality, for some people, is actually their highest value, and that's the way they should be. But for a lot of people, they're just going along with society's conditioning that that should be your highest value, and they're going against their actual instinct. And what that leads to then, obviously, is regret. And that's something I'm always stressing to people. Like, live life with only one fear, and that's regret. Because it's the only fear you should have in life anyway. Because you can't turn back the clock, and you can't make up for things, really, when things have been done. So, you know, regret is the way to live every single day. It's important. To yes, yes. Time. And life is not a dress rehearsal. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Joe, I want to go back to like, again, as I said, uh, the podcast is all about mind, body, health, especially. That's it's such a foundation for everything. I know you stress that to people because you're so big on health and the impact it has on everything. I like, just want to go through a bit of your journey in terms of, you know, where, when did mind, body, health, that whole area, mindset or psychology or exercise, nutrition or whatever, some or all of those aspects become important to you in your life, like, and why? Oh, I, I know the exact moment when that happened. It was, it was April of 1987. And my dad had a heart attack when I was in college. Okay. Now listen to this crazy story. Mm. When my dad was a junior at college, he came home. And my grandfather was 42. My grandfather was a professional baseball player too, a great athlete. He had a heart attack in my dad's arms and died in my father's arms. Is that horrible? Oh, yeah. That happened to my father. It's amazing yeah. that, you know, yeah, that didn't torment him, but maybe it did, I don't know. Yeah. Junior year of college for me. Um, I had a girl, because I had my car at the house, because we, we had a baseball tournament in Long Island. So I was getting a ride home that day to, Anyway, the, the girl gave me a ride home someone went to high school with. She was late because she was working on a paper. Okay. I was supposed to get home probably about one o'clock. I didn't get home till five o'clock. Okay. I get home and there were no cell phones back then, obviously. All the neighbors were, were in front of my house when I got home. I'm like, what's going on? Well, my dad was, it was on a Thursday. I remember my dad was off that day. And he was, excuse me, I just belched. Sorry about that. He was talking to my next door neighbor and he's like, he, he's like, you know, I'm going to go take a nap, whatever, until Joseph comes home. But my mom was at work. And for some reason, my neighbor said something didn't look right. She just had this, you know, gut instinct, right? Took him to the doctor. He had a heart attack in the office. Good. So here's the crazy part. If I would have got home on time, my dad was, I'm going to take a nap. And he would obviously drop dead in his sleep. Mm. That's what would have happened. Mm. And I'm like, history almost repeated itself. Mm. Yeah. So, so when this happened, not that I was into bad stuff, I wasn't anyway. I mean, I had, I, I started getting into health stuff a little bit earlier, but when yeah, that but wasn't your biggest was, priority. Yeah, that was the thing. Yeah, your priority and, when I, and I said, I and I simply said, okay, I was twenty, my dad was fifty. I simply said, that's not happening to me, mm. and that was it. That, that, that was it. your health journey. That's where you started. Yeah, yes, yeah, that, 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 right. That was a slap in the face. What were some when of the first changes the, you made? What were the first changes you made in your lifestyle then? What did I eliminate? Or even just think, improve, not even necessarily eliminate, because some things. Well, I, at that point, I wasn't drinking. I, you know, when I was 15, I stopped drinking Coca Cola. I mean, things, some things I, I, I stopped. Um, let's see, then, oh, I eliminated the micro, because I remember I was microwaving food. That was the end of the microwave. That was done, because I'm like, this this, this, this got to be bad. That was, yeah, exactly. that, was, that, was, that was history. Good. I'd already eliminated alcohol, you know, two years earlier. So that was, that was already gone. And Again, I didn't have the knowledge. When you took nutrition in college, you know, they're teaching you the pasta is healthy. I mean, unfortunately. <laughs> so I was more causing that. I, I said, I, I got to be healthier because I don't want this to happen to me. And as the years went on, when doctors say, well, we need to get family health history. I always go like this. I go, it doesn't matter. I'm not repeating what they all did. Next question. Now, you can have genetic defects. I get it. Yeah. But, cancer, but it's a small sorry, thing. It's small. Right, right, small right. Percentage. Strokes, heart attacks, kidney disease is in my family. You know what? That's not happening to me. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made this, that decision. But this is where, again, people, again, they like to latch the fact that, oh, it's in my family, it's genetics, it's, it's hereditary. Like, bullshit is what I say to most of it. Of course, there's a small percentage right. of people who does genetic. But even like me, most of my family have died of cancer at a young age. Genetically, am I maybe pre, more predisposed to cancer than, let's say, yourself? Possibly. But it's my lifestyle that's going to determine whether I activate those cancer cells or not. Oh, correct. That's Co the reality. Correct. It's all, it's, all, it's all about choice. And, you know, I, back, I guess also back then, too, I, I, oh, you know what happened to us? I started going to the health food store more. And I got introduced to the health world this way. It was funny. I was 18 years old and I was working in the gym. And, you know, my, my normal lunch was a ham sandwich. Mm. Okay. You know, Jewish people don't eat ham sandwiches, but I did anyway. You know, yeah. whatever. And it's not healthy, whatever, whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. And I, and I made my sandwich at work, you know, during the summertime. I worked in a, a, health, a health facility. Uh, health club. And when a guy goes, he goes, Joe, you know what that's made out of? I go, no, it's a ham sandwich. He goes, there's nitrates. And I go, what? And so all the guys were older than me. Like they went to a health food restaurant, one in Jersey, one in New York city. They took me and I got introduced to that world. I go, the brown rice, this is good. The organic cookies. I loved it. So that's when my journey really started from the food wise. I'm like, I like the taste of it. Mm. So as I get older, I started living on my own. Like I first lived on my own full, you know, not, not, not away at college, but like on my own, it like, 21 you know going to grad school whatever i had to go food shopping so i'm buying you know vegan this and then tofu pizza now tofu was crap but it was good back in the day so i'm like okay you know i'm, I'm buying this stuff you know i still ate chicken sometimes and i don't eat chicken anymore but so i started like okay I'm buying, and, and i started shopping at the health food store not the regular supermarket mm. now the supermarkets have it you know they have more stuff now they you know whole foods and sprouts all these places exist now back then they didn't Mm. And I liked it. I mean, and, and I wasn't even when I was broke, because Dave, hear me on this. I am a recovering broke -aholic. Let me say that again. I'm a recovering broke -aholic. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. yeah. So when I was really in debt years ago, most people say I should live on macaroni and cheese. No, my debt got even higher because I wasn't going to eat crappy food. If I would have done what the norm was, I, I could have put on weight. I could have had disease. Who knows? But I'd have a better money situation. Probably I would have got in my debt sooner. But got what I've done to my body. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and my closest friends who said to me, they go, Joe, if you repeated what your, especially what your father did, there's a good chance you'd be dead right now. Yeah, potentially, exactly. Because yeah. again, they, if you do the same kind of lifestyle, you know, you reap what you sow, basically. You know, that's the bottom line with everything. It's what, like I said, every little action. It's like someone making a decision to have a Red Bull. Is the kind of Red Bull going to kill you? No, not in its own isolation, isolated, but if you repeatedly keep having that and you've other poor food decisions or liquid decisions or lifestyle decisions, they all accumulate and eventually it lead to something. Like you can't, you can't like outlive a bad lifestyle. Like it's going to bite you in the ass eventually and it'll be why you end up ending your life. Right. You know? That's the thing so, versus so going peacefully. You're right. And when someone says someone's 50 years old, they died in natural causes, you know what they're saying? We don't know why they died. Don't lie. You're not dying in natural causes at 50. That is a complete lie. Something is asking, if, you know, yeah. but the, the point with all this is this, Dave, is we, we all have a choice. You're, you're correct. And you can do what you want in, in theory. But whenever people use this word, I can't stand it. Everything in moderation that does not work. Mm. So, example, if you go out to dinner every night, I'm sorry, but you're not healthy. It's very difficult. You know what goes back in that kitchen? Even though, I mean, even going to a vegan restaurant is. I mean, when I I'm not a vegan. However, when I travel, I am because it's it's, it's easier. Yeah. But there are people. Like, I, I know I know I know someone from the cruise. We know this person. They go out. You might say their name. I don't want to hurt them. They're, they're close friends of mine. If there's 21 meals in a week, they go out for 20 of them. Yeah, yeah. There's people who do that all the time, of course. And you can't eat healthy, healthy eating out. It's not possible. You know, the vast majority yeah. of restaurants. It's still going to be using a lot of stuff that are too much stuff that isn't going to be good for you. Co correct. And when they go, well, I eat fruits and vegetables. But where the fruit come from? Where the vegetables come from? Yeah. That yeah. matters. Yeah. On, everything. On, on every, yeah, yeah. Everything. Same with meat. People talk about grass fed. Grass fed. Grass finished. Mm. Yeah. Explain that one because that was interesting. We spoke with before we came on. So explain the differentiation there. Grass fed, grass finished. I, I will. Thank you, Dave. Okay. So this happened. Initially, about 12 years ago, I was in Atlanta taking care of a family, North Georgia, actually an hour past Atlanta. And I had to get the family food or whatever. And, and you know, they have to eat. I got to get them the better better choices. So so I was going to get them the hormone-free chicken. Okay. I'm not eating, but they are. Okay. 
So I was talking to the butcher, whatever. And, and I said, can I, I, I go, oh, this is hormone free. And he goes, I have, I'll tell you something. We got to keep your mouth shut. I said, go ahead, I'll, I'll listen. You know, he goes, really? Because if you, if you, I can get fired if I, if I repeat this. I said, let me, let me hear it. If it says hormone free, antibiotic free, only the last two weeks of the animal's life. Mm. That's disgusting. Yeah. And that that's, that's the food. That's the food industry. Like I'm always stressed. Co correct. Right. Now, the other part is, is what happens is the animals go to the slaughterhouse for a month or whatever. And they, 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 they use feed. They, they bulk them up. If you see a heavy cow, something with, you know, if someone says the animal's grass fed, it's a, it's a huge, enormous cow. It looks heavier than, 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 than it was a hundred years ago. They're lying to you. Yeah, totally. So, so the thing needs to be grass finished and how the animal is treated. When these animals are going to get slaughtered, they know they're going to die. They're crying and you're eating that energy. Yeah, the cortisol. Okay? So you're eating cortisol and bad energy, bad karma. To, 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 totally. <clears throat> if you're going to eat meat, let me tell you the best thing you can do is get it from the hunters. Okay, now I'm telling you as a clinical nutritionist, chicken is not better than red meat. Let me say that again very slowly. Chicken is not healthier than red meat. And someone goes, look at the breast, there's no fat on it. That animal was mutilated, pecked at each other, fed grain, corn, what? No, it's not healthy. Mm. So if someone goes down to the wild and there's places in this country, in your country too, I probably have it too, is, and let's use elk and deer meat, okay? So when I, when I eat that stuff sometimes, I know the hunter who killed it, I know where it was killed. The animals, there's no feet around, they're eating off the land. Mm. That's a healthier choice. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it is. And that's the thing. But those things are available. See, in our world today, you can get anything where people go, I don't know how to do that. Well, you can. Mm. And there's Facebook groups or whatever. If you, if you want to look where you live, there's got to be someone who knows someone who knows someone who's a hunter can get you that stuff. There, there's a solution to everything. One quick thing to right, throw in right. there, just, just, just for some of the listeners who may be going, hey, you're vegan. Why are you talking about this? Remember, I'm always about choice. And the way I always stress to people is it's about Here's what I think the best for me in terms of people's lives is raw vegan, let's say. That's the best way to live versus pure, let's say, raw, raw meat carnivore type thing. That's the case of moving in the right direction. So it's like Joe is saying, what he's saying there, if you're going to be right. eating meat, like a lot of these listeners are going to be, make sure you're getting it the right way, the right source, the healthiest way. Because when you get to conventional shite that's in the supermarkets, you're not only getting low quality crap meat that's super toxic. We're getting tons of growth hormones. Correct, correct. Biotics and all the other shit that's in there and all the cortisol and all from the animal producing as it's basically been lined up to be killed. So if you're going to make decisions right. to eat meat, make sure you do it in the right way. And like Joe was saying, like, like people often think chicken's better. The amount of shit that's pumped into chicken's unbelievable. Right. The same as fish, same as salmon and all, like salmon farms and things like that's better. Not better at all. The amount of stuff that's put into them, the dye, the color that's put into a lot of these foods just to make them look better. Same as fruit and veg. When do you see ugly fruit and veg? That's why you're off to buy it like farmers markets or grow it yourself. And when you right. see veg, when it actually grows, like carrots especially, it's the weirdest bloody shapes you'll ever see. Right, right. And, and I like it. Right now, for example, there, there are certain people out there who are claiming certain foods are bad for you. No, like some, some people talk about, oh, there's lectins in, uh, I'm sorry, lectins, lectins in tomato, don't eat tomatoes. If you grow your tomatoes in your backyard, it's not a problem. No, exactly. Not a problem I, had, at all. I had a client years ago who was convinced she was allergic to tomatoes. Her doctors, everyone told her, you're allergic to tomatoes, never eat them. I said, this is fucking ridiculous. There's no way you can be allergic to tomatoes. You know, obviously we can have exceptions, but I didn't believe it. I was right. getting to trying different foods, eliminating different things. Nothing was working. And it was a case then of getting a proper tomato that wasn't treated, not sprayed with chemicals, edit, no problem whatsoever. So it was one thing that was sprayed onto that tomato. That was the problem. And this is the problem with food these days. You're not just eating the food you're buying. You're eating the food plus all the shit they're putting into it to grow it faster. And also exactly. food markets are waxing everything to make it look nicer. So there's a lot of stuff you're consuming besides the actual food. And it's funny. Now, I use my mom's name, my, my late mother. You know my mom. Yeah. So she, she, we went to the doctor, whatever. She did a blood test. and said she had a nut allergy. Mm -hmm. And when, when my mom would eat plain as peanuts with your crap, I said she had a problem. I said, Mom, you don't have a nut allergy. I'm going to prove my point. We went to Trader Joe's. That's like a, it's not a health supermarket, but it's, it's kind of, sort of, in a way. Yeah. There's a good choice. So I got her, I, it'd be great if they I, were in Europe. Yeah, I got her a, a raw cashews. No problem. Yeah. And she goes, well, what's the issue? I said, the oils they make them in are rancid. Yeah. yeah. They're rancid oils. And even the best olive oil in this country is crap. 
I know a professional olive oil formula. I know, okay, from the cruise, okay? She explained all this to me. All the people selling oil, even the, the, the cold press olive oil in the store for $20 is garbage. Mm. It is, there. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know so much stuff is absolute garbage. Don't you know, throw in there on top of that though, is like everyone's going to have different affordabilities. Just, you know, for anyone listening, you might think, oh, I can't afford this and that. Do the best you can. That's all we can of do. Of course. If you can grow all your own food and get stuff from the best source, that's fantastic. That takes level of affordability. If you have a lesser affordability, do the best you can. Also, why not look out for when, like in supermarkets, they're always showing out stuff when it's going ripe, which is when you should bloody eat the stuff. So watch when they're reducing it and buy it for half price. Or even sometimes, I know even my dad even sometimes gets stuff that it might be five quid and they're selling for 20 cents or 20 pence or something in the evening time. So there's ways around everything. Learn how to grow some of your own food because that's some, a way that people need to go more and more now. But the most important message I always stress to people is go as far as you can go. Like you need to eat certain kinds of foods. If you can eat the best quality, fantastic, but at least eat as close to that as you can. Try move as far away from the process side as you possibly can. If you want to live longer, people go, well, they're like, well, Dr. Joe, you get hit by a bus. Yeah, I could. Yeah. You know, hopefully not. Both my parents aren't here. I'm proud of two things in my life. They, people say, well, Joe, what's your proudest moments as a health professional? One, I got my dad from paralyzed to walking after a stroke. That's number one. Kept him alive longer than he should have lived. And I kept my mother alive. My mom smoked from age 12 to 49. She died at 82 and a quarter, you know, due to, mainly due to that car accident. But my yeah. mom lived, you know, she lived healthy because when I came home to visit, I spent months with her and stuff. I, I pay for all the food, you, you know, because she, Wait. my mom was, again, my mom was in fear with money. Like, like I can't afford this. Yeah. I was never, and this is me. This is my issue. Yeah. I had no issue going in credit card debt to buy healthy food. Now that's my thing. Yeah. Yours might be a, an automobile or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah. That's well, your decision. Well, exactly. Yeah. Right. But I realized that by eating healthier food, my chances or my parents' chance of living longer would increase. Yeah. And like, like here's, I know here's you. a like you're going just about your mom, like, you know, I know you, was it 12, 10 years or something, or maybe a longer. You, without a doubt, your mother looked younger as the years went on instead of older. That's one thing I always yeah. noticed about your mom. You know, she looked younger. So it was clear she was consuming. Well, one food. of the things was when I was home in the summertime for three months at a time, my mother was healthy. Like, in other words, you know, we, we, I go to Whole Foods, whatever, and go do this, the exercise, whatever we did. Like, when I was home, she, I mean, my mother, like I said, had that fear. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like so many. You know, because, because my father wasn't a good income earner, he, he, he didn't, but he was a great guy, but he, he had no money. So, and, and he never figured out that thing, which is fine. Yeah. But, but I, I know how food heals. So, you know, when, when I would go play baseball games, I'd stop in New Jersey and go to Whole Foods and spend a few hundred dollars. I was honored to do it. When my mom sat there and ate an organic salad, I felt good. Yeah. And exactly. she went to health food store once in a while when I, when I wasn't home. She didn't want to go because she goes, well, if I go to him and spend a hundred dollars, I said, go ahead. I said, but here, Mike, put on my credit card. But she, yeah. she didn't want to do it. She felt guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole thing around money, which a lot of people have, you know. And that definitely holds people back from making those choices. But what people need to do is look at where you are spending your money. Look at all the crap that people are spending their money on. That they're not even, you know, they're prioritizing the money in one place when they should be prioritizing another place. Right, right. So, and I say, oh, I can't afford to buy, let's say, organic or whatever. Well, what do you spend your own money on? And you see they spend on a lot of dumb, stupid stuff. You know, so look, well, that's well, not to say everybody. Exactly. This is where, look, we all have our own perception and perspective of every situation. But if everyone's genuinely honest with themselves or listen to this, if you say you can't afford something, what do you actually spend your money on? And 99 times out of 100, you can definitely allocate more to something you should prioritize than what you are prioritizing. See, when someone says, like, I can't afford it, I'd rather them say, I don't see the value. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll ask yeah, someone, I go, suppose you get two flat tires, you guys spend five dollars on new tires. Well, I'll do that. Well, why? Yeah, yeah, it's no different than people say, oh, I don't have time to exercise. Okay, there's 24 hours in a day. What are you doing with your day? Are you watching soap operas and some brain dead kind of uh, reality TV? Why don't you exercise while you're watching that? You know, there's always time. Like, people always say they can't exercise, there's no time. There, there is time, there's 24 hours. I have it, you have it, everyone has 24 hours. We all have the exact same amount. The difference is what we're doing with it. Like I will prioritize every day to exercise. You will prioritize exercise. Some else may prioritize sitting their arse watching three hours of soaps or reality TV and say they haven't time to exercise. Same as in nutrition, preparing food, going to a proper grocery shop, you know, taking care of their health, meditating, mindfulness, motivation, all this kind of stuff. It's down to what you prioritize. It's like people right. often say to me, oh, I wish I could do what you're doing or I wish I was as healthy as you or whatever. You could. 
you can, but you're not making right decisions. That's what it comes down to. Now, when we're talking about Bingo. money and what you spend money on, yes, there's affordability. But again, most people are not prioritizing where that money's going. Everyone can do better. Nearly everyone can do better. I can do better sometimes. And I'm pretty damn disciplined in the way I live my life. And I'm sure you can right. sometimes. But the vast majority right. can be so much better. And they need to get up, come out from behind the damn excuses and the blame game. Because that's where most people are living all the time. We well, yeah, had excuses are well thought out lie. We, 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 all make, we all make a choice. I believe, though, as a health coach, as a nutritionist, an exercise physiologist, that improvements are great. There's, you can make improvements. You can. And, and so if you go from here to here, that's great. So yeah. it's, it's kind of like, like, like live money. So let's say you make 50000 a year and you go, I want to make a million. Well, if you make 150000 that's improvement. You do, that's great. So to, and you don't put yourself down. If, if you lose a little bit of weight, here's the thing about like, let's go into health. I'm going to get off the money thing because I'm not an expert in money at all. When people talk about weight loss, I can't stand that word. Okay. Same here. Should be banned. Weight loss. We I, banned the, I banned the weight scale about 20 years ago. Won't use it. Not yeah. a whole anybody. Weight loss. Like I see some of these health people, they go, well, or, or networkers, whatever. Well, I'm doing a 21 day cleanse and a transformation. Great. And what happens when you end it? The weight's going to come back. So I see health professionals out there who go, well, you know, I put on 30 pounds. I'm drinking wine every night. And now I'm doing a 75 day program and you can do it with me okay here's the problem you're not going to keep up that pace after the 75 days you're not yeah that's the problem too hard too fast instead of just right. making steps in the right direction make it a lifestyle habit when things become habit and routine they stick and you rarely deviate backwards from it. and if you do it's only a little bit you soon realize god this feels very shitty so you go back to the good lifestyle whereas when you're depriving yourself um, um, and eliminating course, course. it's worse you're always going to fall off so why the word diet should never be used I always say nutrition lifestyle, not diet, because diets don't work. I never use that word in terms of my own lifestyle. It's nutrition lifestyle. Well, that, well yeah, you know, I wrote the book. I wrote the book, Fire Your Diet, Dave. Yeah, you know, exactly. My books. Exactly. Uh, by, by the way, uh, you know what? I don't have words. Okay. Can I, can I give the acronym for diet? Go on, yeah. Depression, insecurity, emotional trauma. It's a victim club. 100%. Like I always say to people, it's an emotional and psychological trap. And the whole the bottom line is people think the industries are in the, work in their interests. The health, fitness, wellness industry is not interested in you because if you're super healthy, you don't make them any money. You know, so different Correct. pharmaceutical industry, the whole lot. So it's like keep it at a certain level because if you're if the masses are not at a certain level, you can't bring out new gimmicks, new ab rollers, new ab belts, new supplements, new detox plans, new exercise plans, new you know home workout type you can't bring out all this new stuff constantly for more money more books more everything but, but, but they do it. i mean so, Dave, listen, i'll name i'll name every program here i know uh, let's see weight watches jenny craig optifast keto paleo uh cleanse this thing water fasting apple fast all that stuff yeah. here's the issue when someone says that worked for me yeah, there are some certain people who are militant or whatever they can do. Things. I, I I get that. To the average person, that's not going to work. If you no. tell me that your diet worked and then a year later you put on weight, it did not. It didn't. The same as the Biggest Loser, be- all these things. Like Biggest Loser, yeah. they never show the contestants after the show. When oh, oh yeah, that's yeah, funny. One of the guys from the Biggest Loser, I know personally, I'm not going to say his name, I'm giving trouble. Okay. And he said during this whole thing, they were working out like eight hours a day. I said, of course you lost weight. Yeah, of course. And guess what happened? He got fat. He just had that lap band surgery. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But that's the thing, because they're, they're, everything's being done from them. They're being pushed. They don't really have a choice. They're not learning why did they gain weight in the first place, which usually comes from it could be childhood trauma. It could be from right. something that happened sometime in their life, laziness, lifestyle, not knowing how to manage things, not knowing what to do. Suddenly, they're at home on their own when the show is over, go back to normal routines, because they haven't improved anything. This is why it's important for people to realize... What can I do better today than yesterday? What can I do better this week than last week? One little step in the right direction and building that week on week on week and then create healthy lifestyles. It's like the way you live now. You live very different when you were 30, 35, 40, and so on. Same as me. I got into this at 17. Oh, no, 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 Dave, no, time no, no, Dave, no, you're wrong. No, I've been living pretty healthy since my 20s. But I mean, like you were better and better as you went on, as you learned more, implemented more stuff. That oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, 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 yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, was 20, I wasn't a professional, but I formerly were 20 years old. I am yeah. that right, right. So yeah. To my knowledge. But your whole life, right. there's always adding something. You always have something to improve your health in some way, whatever it might have been, changing what you're eating, whatever. So it's an ever-evolving process. And this is why 
doing something just for a certain period of time that's so drastic to what you were doing just before will never work long term because you're waiting for the end date. And when the end date goes, you go, thank Christ, that's over. And you go demented consuming everything that you liked because that's your celebration. And then you get the sugar rushes and everything and you're just back on it again. Whereas if you build things up gradually, you start to appreciate food, taste, right, food right, more, right, right, right. And the reward foods actually you enjoy them more and you don't want as much of them. You're happy having a treat once, correct. once a week Very versus correct. twice or three times <clears throat> a day. No, and it's funny, you know, some of the worst programs in the world are doctor supervised weight loss. They're the worst ones with the chemicals and fillers and, and crap. And those are the worst. Yeah. Doctor so recommended it, insurance covers it. Yeah. It's it's built on trust. You know, people trust the doctor when unfortunately for most doctors, it's the money trail, which is the truth. And they're also getting such kickbacks from pharma. And they basically their whole education for eight years is just pharmaceuticals, basically. I want to pay my toe. Here, my toe is killing me. Okay, sign me off on some subscription for something. So it's never looking at what the hell actually happened. What's the reason? Same with everything. Like people who are very low and depressed and things like that. It's never, okay, let's see why the problem is there. Just like overweight, everything. It's always, oh, you need this straight onto medication. And that's literally, that's the huge flaw that's there at the moment. Yeah, man, that's, it's, you're right, dude, but here's the problem. Unfortunately, it's not going to change. It's, it's, oh, it's not. I mean, there's no chance of it changing. No. Right, 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 right. And that's that's the reality of it. That's what we know. I've had I've had medical doctors who buy my vitamins. I've coached them and stuff. And they're like, well, I know what I'm doing. I said, no, you don't. You don't. Mm. I run the show here. Mm. And, they, and they got much healthier. And, yeah. you know, like, well, like one guy said, he goes, well, goat milk, which I'm a big believer in goat milk, it's got too much fat in it. I said, that goat milk has one ingredient, goat milk. Yeah. That exactly. all the milk you bought in the store has 12. Cut the crap. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. This is where, again, people need to learn about products and what's supposedly healthy sometimes is, but a lot of the time is not healthy. Like it's been marketed or like it perceived or even like the front of the box. It's like, do you have special care in America? Where the oh. picture of a woman in a red bikini. So it looks beautiful. So people think, oh, that must be so healthy. And it's one of the crappiest things you could ever put into your body. It's nutrition. Co correct. There's no nutrition in the bloody thing. But, but, but guess what? In America, it's considered heart health. It's part of the nutrition pr programs in the hospital. Yeah, the, here the, too. People have had heart attacks. It's part of the diet for people who low fat or that stuff. It's part of that program. Yeah, yeah. It's the, poison. But the, it's, it's, it's made by General Mills. Which yeah, is involved yeah. with the pharmaceutical companies. They're in bed with each other, literally yeah. and figuratively, all that nonsense. Yeah. You won't get it out. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. And this is where, again, people have started seeing through the reality that it's quite simple. Industries are industries, just like businesses are businesses to make money and make profit. Humans are the vehicles to make profit for every single industry. So always try to see through and ask questions about everything that you're being marketed by, because typically there's an agenda around it. For most, of course, it's good stuff. But the majority of it is absolute garbage. And we will touch on supplements very shortly. And it's like the supplement industry, like 90, 95% of it is absolute poison for your body. It's just toxic. It's expensive urine. It's a complete waste of your hard earned money. And it's actually making your body less healthy instead of healthier. There's a few companies in the world that are actually any good or any benefit to you. And there's others that are kind of in the middle. So, like, people have to wise up and just start asking questions about stuff because the world is getting sicker and sicker at a time when there's never been supposedly so much information. Never been so much choice with food. Never been so many diets out there. Never been so many books, programs, home workouts, gym workouts, everything. There's never been so much of everything, yet this is a sicker world than it's ever been before because people are literally being kept alive as opposed to being fixed, let's call it, and healed. Like you're saying with your dad and your mom, and we could both give so many stories of people we've helped to go from one stage to a much better stage. And right. that's not of interest to people. It's like me. I've made no money for any industry apart from food because I buy food and I need to eat food. I make no money for any industry for like 15, 20 years. I can't remember last time I had a cold. I haven't had any medication for 15 years of any sorts. I'm used to these industries. I may as well be dead. Whereas if someone even has put on blood pressure medication the first when they're 18 because they're a bit nervous going to the doctor, the heart rate's a bit high. Oh, your the heart blood pressure's a bit high here. You better get on medication. What about how are you going to get off it? It's never here. We're going to go on it for a month now, but will you make these few lifestyle changes? And then we'll check it again. And if it's done, we'll come off the medication or else maybe we'll do it for a month or two. It's like you're on the medication. That's it for life. Lifetime membership, like a gym. Right, right, right. In America, like, like the same way people go, well, I have to be on thyroid medication. I have no choice. Of course. Not always, but, 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 it take, but it takes work. It takes work. Of Dave, course. I'm going to ask this. Um, do you have a vegan butter in your refrigerator right now? You have one? I don't because I don't use them. I know many people who do. Okay. I, I, I want to prove a point to you. 
Yeah. So I pretend I have it. It's another point. <laughs> so I have vegan butter in my margarine. I, I have vegan butter in my fridge. Well, you wait, margarine's worse than butter. You know that. It's way, worse. Way, way worse. Way worse. That's <laughs> another thing, people. Like, anyone listen, this is, it's like I said earlier with the Coke, Diet Coke, Zero Coke. Margarine is absolute garbage. If you're going to eat butter, eat real proper butter. Like, the, it's the more natural something is, the better it is. It's, it's like Joe said about goat milk, and we're going to touch on his products now. One ingredient that's a lot better than stuff like that. I'd be big into vegan products naturally, and stuff like almond milks and all these can be beneficial. But some of them have like 12 ingredients. It's supposed right, to be almond milk. It should be almonds and water, maybe a little bit of sugar for taste. That's it. Not 12. Well, no, 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 sugar, no sugar for taste. Well, no, again, no. Let's, well let's take for the majority. Oh, majority of people won't drink it otherwise. So we're kind of dealing with the masses here. So for the masses, again, that little bit's okay. Or apple juice or something that's. You know, not twelve ingredients. That's the right, point. right. I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. So, Joe, so Joe, I want you to look. Oh yeah, one thing before Joe goes on again. I just want to. I don't know if you call it a caveat or what the hell you call it. A point Wait. I want to make anyway. Obviously, well, Dave, Dave, can I put you? I want to go. I want to go. Can I go grab my book? I want to give my, my book away as a free gift. Can I go grab yeah, it? Yeah, you go grab, and I, I'll just talk away anyway. So grab uh, I'll book. be right back. Right yeah. Back. So guys, before Joe goes on, like Joe has formulated some incredible products. Now they're not vegan, okay? As I've always stressed. I recommend vegan. I recommend raw, raw vegan be the ultimate. I'm not raw vegan, but it's somewhere I move towards. Will I ever be raw vegan? Probably not, but who knows? I never thought I'd be vegan, and I'm vegan over 10 years now. Everyone's on a different journey. Everyone's at different ends of the scale. Like I said, you've got people who eat raw meat, nothing else, down to people who are raw vegan. It's about moving the right direction. So Joe's products may not be vegan, but if you're going to consume products that are not vegan, these are the better ones to have. Also, a lot of vegan products, people assume they're healthy because they're vegan. Just because something's vegan doesn't mean it's healthy. A lot of vegan products are crap. Like we said, the almond milk. You'll have almond milk, so have two or three ingredients. You've almond milk, so have 12 ingredients. So it's about, it's a case of finding products that have the least ingredients. And also it depends where you're at in your journey towards, let's say, raw vegan be the ultimate. So if you consume things like dairy and such things, what Joe is going to tell you is far better in terms of supplements and just in terms of what you consume in general. So I said, I think it's a caveat. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong, if that's the wrong word, but I just wanted to say that I, I, for I anyone, anyone, any vegans might watch this thing. Why the hell are you letting this be said? It's because this is far better if you do a lot of shit that people are consuming. And yeah, Joe, show us your book because it's a great book. Okay. I read it many years ago. To be ago. fair, I, yeah, this is a book I wrote, Fire Diet, 17 Simple Ways to Edit the Doctor's Office. Dave, will you give them a link so they can get a free copy of my book? Sure, yeah. Okay. It's... um. Turn to some pages as stuff on food, nutrition, water, supplements, how to fire your negative relatives. It's all in there. <laughs> Finances. I mean, it, it, you know, just re there's recipes too. This is a really, really good book. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I'm no, give it, is, it, to you it is a good book. E e e and you get an ebook on it, so it'll be, it'll be free. So let's figure out a way for people to get that. Okay, Dave. And, is there a, web, reach is there a website out people go or do they email you? Or no, no, they, 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 let, them let them private message me on Facebook, whatever, because yeah, I'll yeah. give them a link. I'll send I'll, it to them, all right? I, I'll add that in the show notes. So if anyone wants a free copy of Fire Diet, to just sit, contact you on social media. Okay, you got it? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Now, let's, let's, are we ready to talk products right now? Because I'm just. Yes. So, I, yeah, so talk about your products. Here. I just, I just spoke about it. Oh, okay. An Let me talk about the stuff you go. Let me talk about the first thing here. Okay. So this, this, is a, this is a picture of my mother, my late mother. It's called Mom's Butter. Let me explain this in a second here. So when you look in the store, cow butters, vegan butters. In fact, is it, what, what's that? Kerry Gold, you know, heard of Kerry Gold in Ireland, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good friend of mine's wife is related to the Kerry Gold people. They buy mom's butter. They said, my, this tastes way better than theirs. Way better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me explain the reason why. The human body has a lot of difficulty breaking down chemicals and fillers, as well as cow products and stuff like that. It is scientifically proven that goat is a much better option than even some of the best vegan stuff. Now, does it take the place of fruits and vegetables? No, we're not talking about that. So goats, all goat products take about 20 minutes to digest in your system. Goats is a much smaller animal. The A2 enzyme in goat stuff, naturally, some people say they're lactose intolerant. 89 to 90% of people aren't. I've had, I have all goat products here. I've had two or three people not like my stuff in seven years. That's pretty good, isn't it, Dave? 
That's 99.9%. Yeah, yeah. And like goats are more similar to humans versus cows. Anyway. Yes, the digestive system it, it is. Just one stomach and, three in a cow. And I have the most prestigious farm and lab on the face of the earth. Let me say it again. No one has what I have. The goats drink apple cider vinegar in their water every morning. There's no other animals on the property. My machinery is all goat stuff. So when you buy even the best vegan vitamins, stuff like that, they all share machinery. I don't. What I have is incredible. And a number of vegan people, Dave, um, they do buy my stuff because they just do. One ingredient, goat ghee, okay? And this, this is, my mom and I, we did this together. And we first did, my mom goes, this is crazy, but blah, blah, blah. we all this tasting. We figured it out. There's no mass production ever. It smells delicious. So this is a great replacement for olive oil. It also, because it's a ghee, never goes rancid, mm. which means if I ship it out to Ireland, Dave, and it gets all warm, it's okay. It could be warm, cold a million times. It's not going to get rancid. Oils do. That's why when you, when you have olive oil sitting on your counter and, and like three months later, you go, huh, I didn't use it. How come it evaporated? Because light destroys oils. Mm, totally. Yeah. Even, even the best olive oils, okay, still rancid. It's very hard to find super pure. Very difficult. And this also tastes really well. And I figured out a way how to make cookies out of this and pancakes, healthy ones that taste good. When my friends have tried it, they're like, oh, they roll their eyes. Like, no. And they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I love it. One of my good friends, actually his family's from Ireland, too, originally, last name Riley. Interesting. He he went down to visit my mother a couple of years ago. OK, when she was alive, about four years, about five years ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, whatever, four or five years ago. And she, she, he went over the house. And, she, and he made her, she go, he goes, listen, I don't like butter. She goes, eat, she, I'm sure my mother cursed, eat the butter. He loved it. He, and so he bought five bottles. We used to have the little bottles. Now we only have the big ones, which is a pound and a half. This ships around the world. I'm sold out right now. I mean, I'm having a new batch made, completely sold out of it. People love it. And, and again, is it fat free? No, because butter has to have fat in it. If you buy a fat free butter, it's fake. Yeah, it's like margarine. That's why it melts at room temperature. There's no fat in it to keep it solid. That's why a block of butter stays solid. Right, exactly right. And listen, I, and, and this is listen, this, this is this is great. How you read is how it's made. With fresh goat milk harvest from grass-fed, no pesticide ever goats. The cream from the goat milk is churned into butter and it ever so gently simmered for several hours. While the small batches simmer, I only make 60 bottles at a time. The goat's milk, goat milk solids, protein, and lactose sink to the bottom of the steam filled kettle, leaving behind the most pure butter on the planet. This is a real natural single only food ingredient uh, product that makes it a slight color and varies from batch to batch. This is the gold standard. There's nothing better for cooking, nothing. And that's a fact. Yeah. And I will go toe to toe, uh, Dave, listen, I love you, you're a great friend. I'll go toe to toe with you, mm. anyone. That there's not, if you need butter or something to cook with, there's nothing better, nothing mm. on this earth. If you have it and you say, oh, I got avocado oil. How was that made? How was that process? Mm. Yeah. Like and I said earlier, it's, it's, it's like as natural as a thing can be. That's where you want to get to. As this, 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 right. This is incredible. And it, and it, and it tastes good, too. It, it, it's a goatee. You no, know, it doesn't have that after goatee taste. Mm. And that's how, I, that's how I made the mom's butter. And it's a, it's a great product. Yeah. It, it really is. I'm proud of that. Is it ever going to be in the store? No. And by the way, when you buy stuff on Amazon, Amazon used a lot of third-party companies. Did you know that? Since that happens, there are many people who go to Walgreens or Walmart or whatever store, buy cheap vitamins, put their own label on and sell them on Amazon. Nobody knows. Of course, yeah, of course. Disgusting. Awesome Absolutely yeah, yeah. disgusting. It pisses me off to know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it does, but that's what happens, you know? That's what it So reason. anyway, so I'm really, I'm really proud of this stuff. Yeah. No mass reduction, and, and it's great. So That's a nice um, memory. It's a nice memory of your mom as well, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the name, and, and, it's, it's her names and including it, which is great. So it's on, nice on the new website, musclegoat.com, that's musclegoat.com. Uh, we're going to have things on the butter. It's not ready yet, but we're working on it. There, there'll be stuff on the butter. There'll be you know, the other stuff I'm about to show you, you know. So yeah. can I show you something else about it? Your on, yeah. system? Take another minute there and show us the other product, yeah. You have a question about this or we're good? No, we're good, yeah. Show us the other one you have as well. This right here, I formulated this past April. Okay, it, it is colostrum. Now, here's what colostrum is. It's the first milk from any mammal, including a, a human, the first 48 hours of life. So in other words, when, when a woman gives birth or a mammal gives birth and they breastfeed their, their babies, right? The most nutrient thing in the world, mineral-wise, and you, you don't know, you can't measure it, 
is the breast milk from them to their baby the first 48 hours. That makes sense? Totally, yeah. That's called colostrum. I took the excess, not away from the babies, but the excess, put into vitamins. And it's great for your immune system, great for GI tract. Can I call it a probiotic and digestive enzyme? No, I can't. That'd be a lie. However, it can act as that. And this is, this is incredible. This is a two-month supply here at the Gochun Gapple side of being in the water every morning. And how is this stuff made? 100% grass-fed goat milk colostrum from pesticide-free and chemical-free pastures. That's it. No one does this. And this is making a difference. Immune support, GI tract, it's great stuff. Is that so, on the same website or a different website if people want to? It, it, it's, it, it's going to be on the new website very, very soon. But these, these, these things, these two things right here, if you need them, you have to re, re, reach out to me privately. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, be putting, I'll be putting links to Joe in the show notes. If anyone wants to yes. contact Joe Bray, can just check the links I'll put in. Yeah, and, and again, no mass production as well. So this is, this, is, this is great stuff. I mean, it also breaks down. Remember, goat stuff breaks down your body within 20 minutes. Cow stuff doesn't. Even the plant-based vitamins have chemicals and fillers. It's not what you think it is. Even the, the best vitamins out there share machinery. I don't. I have my own. Mm. Nothing touches my stuff but goat stuff on that machinery. And that's huge. No cross-contamination possible. Mm. And this, again, is where the food industry comes in, where you're given a certain impression of what goes on in a lot of products, but a lot of products are not what they're made out to be. So just, guys, the main thing is with food in general, supplements, everything, just be mindful of being asking questions about how these things are actually made and what's in them. And as I said, look at ingredients. And if there's lots of stuff you don't recognize, that's not a good sign. But now, something that you want to show there, The protein. Now, this is an interesting story, okay? For, for years, okay, th th let me explain this to the fact that people need to know this. The number one and number two selling vitamins on the face of the earth are two products, Dave. Guess what that is? Two things in the world. Go on. Cow whey protein and creatine. Yeah. So sure. that tells me that muscle people still spend the most on vitamins. Other people do too, but, and the gap is closing because, you know, years ago, women didn't take whey protein. Now they do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whey protein's huge. Right. It, it, it's a big money maker. Okay. Yeah, big time. So I'm dating this girl in Albuquerque. This is years ago because I just moved back here. Okay? And I was complaining about the protein. And she goes like this. She goes, would you stop ready? Just create your own. And I go, one day I will. I mean, obviously she got fired, but that's another story yeah. for another episode. <laughs> so, I, so I figured it out because I had the protein first and then I added the colostrum and, and I'm sorry, the butter and then the colostrum. So yeah. I have vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry protein. Okay. It's, tastes good. Breaks down your body within 20 minutes. No aftertaste. So when you when you buy pro, you know, you've had vegan protein before, Dave. You know yeah. the aftertaste? You know, there's like yeah, an aftertaste. The crappier products is always an aftertaste, yeah. No, no, ev no, almost every product is an aftertaste, even the best ones, supposedly. You know why? Because they take the stevia leaf plant and they put it into a chemical and goes into the batter. If you take the stevia leaf in its purest form and put it into the batter, which is more expensive, you won't have the aftertaste. I figured that out. Yeah. As a formulator. Don't, don't again processing. You know, the more processed something is, the worse it's going to be. Yeah, so and, 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 and again, and this helps. There's natural glutathione in this, which is great. I have people who have... Who have, who have cancer people who are on radiation and chemo can't eat who take myself because it's natural glutathione and, and they all need to build muscle. It's naturally in the goat milk, not added. Every other company adds stuff, adds stuff, adds stuff. Yeah. Well, look, guys, the main thing for me is I know Joe a long time. I know he's got huge integrity. I know Aiton he puts out is going to be the highest quality. As I said before we started talking, you know, the thing is there's such a range of products out there. The main thing is to get ones that are small number of ingredients, ones you can recognize. Also, yeah. again, move in the direction towards where I am, it's, you're on your own journey where you are in that spectrum. If you still consume things like whey protein or like uh, dairy products, his products will be far, far better. Like there's oh, no they, they, comparison. They, 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 there's no comparison. No comparison. No comparison. Now, Definitely something right to consider. I want to show you something. I know I'm interrupting. I apologize. This is strawberry, right? Now my strawberry has less protein. This is only 17 grams of protein. Vanilla and chocolate is 26. When people say, well, I want my kids to lose weight. I want my kids to be better athletes. I recommend the strawberry for the kids. It's, it's less protein in it and it tastes good. Yeah. So what I did, you'll love this. I took beets and I made that in, in, into, into the formula and make it taste like strawberry. That's the sweet yeah. of beets. Isn't that yeah, great? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And healthy as well. So super right. healthy. Good and super healthy as well. And a good thing to get into yeah. the kids. Yeah. By the way, Max would love this. Hint, hint. Max, yeah. your son would love this. <laughs> so like I, I'm going in the show notes, I'll be putting in the links anyway to all Joe's websites and social media. So 
if anyone wants to reach out to him, go go to any of those links and have a chat with him and see if these things are for you or maybe someone you know as well. But all I can say is I can vouch for Joe in terms of his integrity and his genuine passion for helping people. Hey, hey, hey Dave, can, can I can I give out my phone number right now? Because I'll speak to anyone yeah. with a pulse. Yeah, right. go on, yeah. Fire to my, my, I still have my, still have my New York City phone number because I still have my New York accent, obviously. <laughs> so it's one nine one seven three nine 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 seven five four. That's one nine one seven three nine 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 seven five four. My email d r j o e k a s p e r at gmail dot com. That's doctor d r j o e k a s p e r at gmail dot com. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I'm yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Muscle Goat page. I'm here. I yeah. want to talk to you. I'll give you a consult at no yeah. charge. Yeah. If you're looking to add 10 to 20 quality years to your life, I'm your guy. If you're a victim, I, I, you know, and you're going to complain and bitch, I'm not your guy. Yeah. Well, that's it, guys. Like, take, check out his stuff. Check out all the stuff he puts across social media. If you're interested in any of his products or his book, get in touch as well. Remember, you can get a free copy of his book, Digital Version. It's well worth reading. It's a fantastic book as well. I'd say he's a good guy. He's been become a very good friend over the years. And there's not many people out there, I would say, are genuine health, health professionals who have integrity. And he's one of the very few because most people are just into money, greed, and see people as a conveyor belt for money. And that's it, unfortunately. Just how the world works. But uh, this guy has proper integrity. So I'm sure all he's shared on this particular episode of the Mind, Body, Health podcast has been beneficial to you. Hopefully some of it's been inspiring, educational. Hopefully you've got some light bulb moments. Hopefully it's woken you up to some truths about how the world works and the industries work. Joe, I want to just thank you for your time. I know you're a busy guy and the time difference and everything. So thanks for being on the My Body, Body Health podcast. I appreciate it, Dave. And Dave, most important, you're an incredible, incredible friend and an even better father. You're, you're great at that. So I admire you, number one, for being a great father. That's number one, more important than anything we've spoken about today. Yeah, thank you. Because that's, again, it's like when we spoke of values, that's always been my highest value, even as a kid growing up, to be a good father, you know? So I do my best to be a good role model. So I do the best I can, which we can all do. So thanks for that, Joe. Um, I said, thanks for being on. Thanks, guys, for listening or watching, depending on whether you listen to the podcast or watch it on YouTube. Make sure you give a rating review. Make sure you share this out there far and wide. People need these messages. People need to learn the truth about things. And everyone needs inspiration. And now more than ever in the kind of times and world that we live in. So please share this out there and um, keep enjoying the My Body Head podcast and look forward to speaking to you on the very next episode.